Alopecia areata, a temporary or chronic loss of hair in different parts of the body, is thought to be caused by an immunologic disruption of the hair growth cycle. Our hair growth cycle consists of four stages, anagen, catagen, telogen, and exogen. Anagen is considered the phase of active hair growth. Up to 90% of our hairs are in this phase at any given time, and it can last anywhere from three to five years. In the catagen phase, also known as the transition phase, hair growth begins to slow and the follicle detaches from the blood source. This phase usually lasts around 10 days and accounts for about 5% of all hairs at any given time. Next is the telogen phase, which has been subdivided to include a fourth phase, known as the exogen phase. 10 to 15% of all hairs are in the telogen phase at any given time. This phase lasts around three months. Hairs are neither growing nor shedding during telogen, and it is referred to as the resting phase. The exogen phase can last from two to five months. It is the phase of active shedding. For most individuals, 50 to 100 hairs are shed daily. During this time, the anagen phase has already restarted the process of new hair growth. Alopecia areata occurs when hair follicles in the anagen phase prematurely transition into the catagen, telogen, and exogen phases. The result is a temporary or chronic state of increased hair shedding and a suppression of hair regrowth. When considering alopecia areata or any autoimmune disorder, it is important to remember the cause is multifactorial. We can equate this to the idea of a sports team. Victories are not the result of one player, but rather a contribution by multiple players. The same goes for any loss the team may suffer. Each player on the team each play called by the coach, all contribute to the outcome of the game. The exact pathophysiology of alopecia areata is not completely understood. The involved players consists of environmental triggers and dysfunction occurring within the immune system and a genetic predisposition. The environmental triggers can be anything from an emotional stressor or an illness to a vaccine or even a medication. The idea of immune system dysfunction is a little more complex as it relates to a concept known as immune privilege. Several cells and organs in our body have immune privilege. These include our eyes, our central nervous system, the placenta, and the testes. Hair follicles also have immune privilege. Having immune privilege means these particular cells are, in essence, protected against the damaging effects of an inflammatory immune response. In the hair follicle, immune privilege is believed to involve low-level expression of major histocompatibility complex 1 and 2, the presence of regulatory T cells, and tight suppression of CD8-positive NKG2D-positive T cells. In the case of alopecia areata, this immune privilege is lost. The cause is a result of a genetic predisposition and possibly due to an unknown stressor or one of the other environmental triggers previously mentioned. As a result, T cells are activated and cytokines interferon gamma and interleukin-15 are released. Interferon gamma stimulates the expression of major histocompatibility complex 1 and allows the follicles hidden antigens to be presented to the T cells. Interleukin-15 suppresses the regulatory T cells and promotes proliferation of CD8-positive NKG2D-positive T cells. The result is damage to the antigen hair follicle, leading to an acceleration of the follicle into the catagen phase. 